The Supreme Court has on the, uh, today uh, dismissed uh, a suit by the People's Democratic Party, PDP, seeking the disqualification of the ticket that produced uh, the president-elect, Bala Ahmed Tinubu, and the vice president-elect, Kashim Shatima, in the 2023 presidential election. The party claimed that the vice president-elect, Shatima, was nominated twice, both for the Bruno Centro senatorial seat and for the vice presidential uh, position, Pence, arguing that Shatima's dual nomination was in gross breach of the provisions of sections 29, subsection 1, subsection 33, subsection 35, and sections 84, subsection 1, and subsection 2 of the Electoral Act 2022 as amended. They therefore pray the court to nullify both Tinibu's and Shatima's candidacy. Justice Adamu Jauru, who read the judgment, however, awarded a sum of two million naira uh, fine against the PDP, even as the suit was dismissed for lacking in merit. In a unanimous decision of a five-man panel, the court held that an appeal for, by the PDP challenging the validity of the Tinubu Shatima ticket lacked merit. Delivering the late judgment on the suit, Justice uh, Damo Jauru upheld the concurrent decisions of the Court of Appeal and the Federal High Court in Abuja, which earlier dismissed the case. The court cleared the air uh, that Shatima withdrew his uh, senatorial nomination on 6 July 2022 and was subsequently replaced. As such, he was no longer a candidate for the Senate and his position as Vice President did not constitute a multiple nomination breach. The court in its ruling stressed that the opposition party had no case. Hence, the court has asked the PDP to stay off the matter as it is an internal affair of the All Progressive Congress Party. This is Nigeria Today and our focus is on the just dismissed case of the alert double nomination by the Supreme Court. I am your carrier, Clinton. Welcome. Joining us in the studio is a regular face and our dependable colleague, Jide Ujo, a public affairs analyst. Good to have you with us. My pleasure. It's always good to have you here. Thank you very much for the and, uh, Also with me in the studio is another regular and a friend of the house, Ahmed Abubakar Tanimu, an Abuja-based activist and a human rights lawyer. Welcome to Nigeria today. Thank you for having me. You know, it's always a pleasure having both of you here. <laughs> Okay, I'll start with you, uh, Tanimu. Uh, sometimes uh, when a, a suit is struck out, I kind of um, I, I, am a, I'm, I kind of wonder because sometimes it appears uh, that the parties involved are not well informed before you know uh, filing a case. So what happened in this case? And tell us, you know, as uh, uh, for a layman, what exactly went down? Thank you very much. This is a very important question, and. Um most, I believe most Nigerians, if you look at the essence of our laws, is not to be uh, having judgments that are confusing. And I'll give this to the Supreme Court. If the judgment was a unanimous decision spanning from the High Court, Appeal Court, and down to the Supreme Court. In any matter of uh, litigation, the most important aspect is for you to have locus standing. That is to tell the court that this particular issue that you are bringing before the court affects you directly in one way or the other. For political parties, it's clear. You cannot be in PDP instituting an action over an issue that emanated from APC. It is their internal affairs. But assuming without conceding, the issue that you are litigating upon, has it violated any of the clear, unambiguous provision of our laws, the answer is no. If you talk about um, multiple nomination, what defines multiple nomination? It's very simple and easy for every, for all to comprehend. You are contesting for a governorship position, and at the same time, you are equally contesting for the Senate. It doesn't appeal to common sense. It will be a different scenario. The question that uh, really readily comes to mind is that. Do you see anybody printing posters that is contesting to be a vice president or a deputy governor? You are just nominated. So it can be that um, you have you are been elected a governor, you have you actually even participated in any of the electoral positions. It's not up to you to determine that you want to be a deputy, you want to be a vice. It's up to the party or 
the uh, candidate that uh, wins the, the seat to contest that office. So I want to see it as a form of mischief, and I'm happy that the Supreme Court have awarded cost. So it's even good for the Legal Practitioner Disciplinary Committee to take uh, punitive action, because if you look at it, our courts are saturated. We have so many cases. You go to Supreme Court, you have cases that have been adjourned up to our 2025 and 2028, we are in 2023, and those cases too are important. It is because we have a litany of such kind of um, cases that lack merit, people that are in medless interlopers, things that doesn't concern them, they are litigating it, creating a burden on our judicial system. So I'm very happy with the Supreme Court. Their judgment is sound, it generally goes to the issue. You don't come to the court to waste the precious time of the court on an issue that you know too well. This is not the first time it's happening. There's a precedent. Most of our court um, system is based on precedent. That's what has happened in the past. You want to make take an example from it to explain what will be in the present. Atiku Abubakar was nominated to be the vice president while he has just um, won the gubernatorial seat in Adabawa. And even at then, people complain, and the court severally has decided that doesn't amount to multiple uh, nomination for to warrant the kind of action that has been instigated. But we are not surprised. Some people have made it a practice. Some want to be awarded senior advocate of Nigeria, so they believe they can go to the Supreme Court with all manner of cases. And some is the politicians. They want to test the waters. They bring all sorts of politics. So it's the duty of a prudent and uh, legal practitioner to tell such kind of clients, regardless of the amount being paid as professional fee, that they will not be party to such kind of um, vexatious action that lacks merit, clearly they lack a um, local standing. You don't, not, the action does not affect them in any way. It's not to their benefit, even if such um, rules and uh, provisions of the electoral acts are violated. It's for the party or a member of the uh, APC that participated in the whole process. And in any case, there was no violation. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. GD. They call describe the PDP as a meddlesome interloper and a busy body. And uh, in this situation, is it uh, a matter of anything can happen in Nigeria? Is that why <laughs> this kind of um, you know uh, cases sometimes? Exactly. <laughs> and okay, I don't want to look at this in isolation. In between yesterday and today, there have been three serious cases that have been decided that could have affected the inauguration of Ajua Jubala Ahmed in Ubu on Monday. <laughs> I really don't understand the pathological hatred the opposition have for the president-elect. So much so that, in one instance, somebody who lost the election in 2019 is asking Supreme Court to declare that is the president-elect. After losing at the Supreme Court in 2019, it is now coming in 2023 that Buhari used his tenor and that he should be the one to rule from <laughs> May 29. So I, I, I'm trying not to be very abusive, but the court has done the need for awarding a 40 million fine against, uh, no, what, was it 20 million? Against Ambrose Uru of. Uh, let, let, let's not just mention they, names. Let no, no, the decision issues. that came yesterday. No, yeah. people need to understand need to that, 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 that decision has been made. So it's not stop judice. The decision has been made. But, but it's for us to know. You know why you want to isolate the issue of double nomination? Two, three things could have affected. Because the Ambrose Uru case was also a Supreme Court decision that, was, that took place yesterday. Now you also have some residents of Abuja, three of them and their lawyer that went to court saying that they should not allow inauguration because of uh, issue around citizenship, issue around the, um, what's the age of um, Tinubu and the rest. And the court awarded penalty against them because these are pre-election matter. You, you did not challenge the qualification of the man before election, even after the election, you are not an aspirant in APC. For you to even have a locus to want to, then you are already jumping the gun to say that 
and uh, Tinubu did not meet 25 percent of votes. That, those are issues that, that are already before the election petition tribunal. And I, I'm so glad that the Supreme Court, I mean, the Court of Appeal Justice on Motoshon, in the case of those um, Abuja residents and their lawyer, you know, awarded penalty against them. Just the same way they award penalty against Ambrose Owuru, who incidentally is a lawyer. And now this issue of double nomination of Chetima. Because I, I just want to, like my learning colleague said, whatever we do today, we should remember there will be a tomorrow. Yes, you, the law courts are there to ventilate grievances. But not the kind of frivolous petitions. Even when a rookie lawyer knows that by precedent, this issue should not have gone to court. You fight, and, and, and Supreme Court had, in previous time, even find some senior lawyers. So many of them. So many of them. Senior lawyers find them for bringing frivolous petitions before the court. And people have not desisted. Why? The point is, like he said, there are serious cases that Supreme Court should have attended to. But they have to, they have to jump over all of these other cases because of the inauguration. So that it's not like become an academic exercise. Because if that decision was not given today, by Monday there will be inauguration. So they have to f fast track the, the, the decision, their decision on those three cases. But I'm just appealing to our legal practitioners to please resist the temptation of politicians to not clog our courts with petitions like, I'm not saying people should not approach court, but for instance, we know, even people who are not lawyers know what is pre-election matter, what is post-election matter. An election matter is so generous, is unique on its own you have an opportunity to go to court. If it's before election, it's pre-election matter. The Constitution in Section 285 has laid down procedures for you to approach the court. If it's post-election, the same court, the same Constitution have also said, this is how you approach. If you read Constitution alongside with the Electoral Act, even without you being a lawyer, you understand the procedures. But some people, for mischief purpose, or testing waters, as you alluded to, we want to just go to court to make headlines. And when decisions are now given against them, their supporters will say, oh, they have induced the judges. And that is dangerous. If you read the decision of their lordship on this issue of uh, double nomination, as well as the decision of the three Abuja residents and their lawyer, the court said they want to bring the judiciary to ridicule and to truncate our democracy. And that is a dangerous thing. So you just want, because in the eye of the public, you know in the course of uh, the past few days, they say, oh, these Supreme Court justices have been induced with, they were mentioning very humongous sums of money. Why would somebody even need to go and induce a judge on a case that everybody will know that this is not technical in nature? So. But they want to cast as passion on those judges. And Mark Ukeria, this is part of the reason where the Lordship earlier this week denied the, uh, uh, the uh, live streaming of cases at uh, this election petition tribunal. You know, when they, had, when, when, they, when they offered their explanation, they said they don't want undue sensationalization and drama. Because that's what some people just want to do. They know they don't have an issue, but they want to say so that when you now give the decision, they say, oh, what do you expect? They have been compromised now. They've been induced. I, I will stop you here. <laughs> Let's pause for, uh, for a break now, but uh, don't go away. We'll be right back. The implementation of the ruling is also dependent on another aspect or another harm of government. No one in the world will allow under digital economy for banks not to be dispensing domestic currency in that economy. What would make this one different? We want to know what they do as occupation. All of these are attributes that are questions have been designed 
to investigate. In a few days to come, we'll see that they are all around their own crimes and uh, everywhere in Nigeria, uh, telling people to cooperate. Welcome to Nigeria today. Welcome back. It's in Nigeria today. My guests are still here with me, Judy Ujo, a public affairs analyst, and Ahmed Abubakar Tanimu, a legal practitioner. Now, uh, uh, Tanimu, uh, Judy Ujo have said a lot about um, the, you know, the attitude of uh, the lawyers and, uh, you know, and the filing of cases, frivolous cases. So, what should be done to stop lawyers from uh, bringing judiciary to ridicule? Because uh, with these kinds of cases, it's becoming uh, uh, funny. Um, I would take responsibility personally and uh, as a member of the Nigerian Bar Association. It behoves on lawyers to equally regulate itself. We have the legal partitional disciplinary committee, but you see the challenge is that at times you even have those are supposed to be the guardian angel leading the course of uh, the bar equally being found wanting here and there. They are the same set. Some of them are the same set of people that are either wanting in this regard. So who will now take um, action against them? This thing is only um, peculiar to our client. You go abroad. Look at the case of um, Ibori, when he, he, could, he, he, he got his freedom while he was in Nigeria, but the moment he went to the UK court, they don't even have time to waste time. Before you know it, he was convicted. Even the lawyer that represented him was convicted as well. Look at the recent case of um, Senator Ike Ikeri Madu. You see that um, lawyers have very integral role to play to ensuring that um, there's um, justice in our courts. If you fail on that track for whatever consideration, usually is a uh, monetary consideration. The inducement is not only to the judges, but mainly to the practicing lawyers, because we are, we are supposed to be ministers in the temple of um, justice. We are supposed to tell our clients to their faces that regardless of the amount that they are trying to give us professional fee, there are certain things it goes against the ethics. It's already encapsulated in our course of professional ethics, and we all know it is rudimentary right from your uh, undergraduate days to your um, uh, training in the in Nigerian law school. We have been taught severally, we have been uh, given so many lectures, seminars, just to ensure that we comply. We, need, we are supposed to set examples, we are supposed to be a paragon in terms of depicting that um, we do, we're doing everything that is right in the society for others to emulate. But the economy, and the, because we are a product of a society, we don't uh, expect to be completely different. We are a reflection of what um, stinks in the entire um, society. Because if the society have um, we've glorified the idea of making money, everybody wants to be extremely rich without questioning the source of their wealth. So everybody can do anything. I bet you. This is even small. So many other funny cases will still come. Once you have the money, you can give it a try. Some will damn the consequences. If you are being sanctioned for two million, I was expecting that um, they should make it very conditional. You know, two million is too small. You should sanction them about maybe a hundred million, and they should make it as part of the judgment that no court should honor any such kind of um, processes from that particular litigant, the lawyer that represented the litigant. Is when this when the courts are coming hard on lawyers by making their sanction to be enforceable because most of the times we've seen cases where some of the lawyers were sanctioned they didn't pay the money and they go about with their practice it means something is fundamentally wrong so, so definitely we have so many issues from the association angle from the way the judiciary so we need complete overhauling we pray that um, the right minister of um, justice and the Attorney General of Federation will be appointed by the uh, incoming government that will completely revamp the judiciary and the legal practice the way we have it at the moment. Uh, yeah, um, uh, I, I just want to also ask of the same, what do you think should be done for us to, you know, because uh, uh, the common man there sees uh, the judiciary as his hope, we see the judiciary as a, the hope of the common man. And if these kind of cases keep coming, if a man approaches uh, a lawyer and with the hope that, oh, something reasonable will come out, instead of, you know, being informed of, you know, what he or she is going into, it, they go to court at the end of the day, they just strike out the case. You know, the, the hope is dashed because he feels something else uh, had happened or you, has you, happened. You, you know, you care for me, 
my worry, which I insinuated in my earlier remarks, is not even that uh, somebody cannot approach court. My worry is the aftermath and the mischief behind some of those cases. You, can, you need to understand why politicians go to court. Politicians sometimes know they cannot win a case. But in order to pacify their mob supporters, they will go to court to say, you know, we are in court. We are going to deal with them. In fact, you will see, they know deep down in their heart. Even their lawyers have told them this can't fly. But they need that time, six months, you know, things will have calmed down. And the uh, supporters will, after a, turn, uh, after a period of time, they will be worn out. They will no longer show interest. But assuming that they said they are not going to court, they will say, oh, you have sold out. That means that somebody, has, maybe the person who won has paid you off. That's why you don't want to go to court. I don't know whether you get my analogy. So sometimes the, the, the politicians that go to court also does it or they do it in order to kind of like a placebo, like a doctor will give a placebo to a patient that is not sick, but who thinks he is sick. He will just say, just take. But it's not a drug, but he just wants him to have a sense that he's using pills to cure something. So sometimes they go to court for that sing singular reason. They also go to court to grandstand, grandstanding, you, you know, and, and, and you know, something happened in the course of the week. The, the legal team of APC and Ashwaju said none of their lawyers should address press. You know why? Because if you see the opposition, they are always entertaining the press. So the moment they step out of the court, the barrage of uh, you know reporters approach them. What how did you, how did you see today's proceeding? You know how you your people they, they, they say, ah, you know, just give me one week. I will deal with this case and I will expose this fraud. And I will... But meanwhile, deep down, he knows. But he just wanted to grandstand. And that is why I'm worried about the insinuation that is going on against our judiciary. You know, the, the reason being this when you saw in the minds of your supporters that the moment the judgment is against you, then the judges have been induced, have been compromised. It makes people to lose confidence in the judiciary. Uh, am, I, am I making sense? So, situations where you had people after the election, oh, when you say go to court, that means your father or your elder brother is the judge. So, what alternative do you want to pursue if you don't want to go to court? Because you feel that when somebody says, if you are aggrieved, go to court. You know, say, if somebody says go to court, it means his elder brother or his relation is the judge. You are the marketing our judiciary. It is the same judiciary that gave judgment against the sitting president on the issue of Nara redesign. How many months ago? Just March this year. Supreme Court gave judgment against the sitting president and ruled him out of order on the Nara redesign. People will not applaud the Supreme Court on that. So any decision that the judiciary now gives, particularly against a politically exposed person, is deemed to have been procured. So you lose. The next thing is that don't mind their lordship. They, they have received bribe. They will start calling humongous sums of money, which they cannot, they cannot um, substantiate. substantiate. And that is the danger. Because the moment you are not looking at the merit of this issue, like my learned friend has said, some of these cases are locus classicals. They have been precedent, there have been previous decision of the Supreme Court on them. But somebody in 2023, look at the decision he talked about that was given way back in 1999, 2000. It's been there in the law books. You have these law books. You know that that is the Supreme Court decision. But somebody in 2023, almost 20, how many years after? 23 years after, is still going to court over the same issue. But now, the court has given a decision against such person. The next thing is to say, oh, they were bribed. 
That is not fair. Because these judicial officers cannot come out in the open to say, no, we were not bribed. <laughs> Thank you and very that's much. The danger. Thank you very much, today. That's it on Nigeria today. We want to thank our guests for sharing their thoughts with us. Ahmed Abubakar Tanimu, an activist and human rights lawyer. Thank, thank you, you very me. much for coming. And also, Jili Ujo, a public affairs analyst. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us. My pleasure. And also, uh, my viewer, thank you so much for being part of this. Remember, the program Nigeria Today, every day at 7.30 p.m. on NTA News 24. You can watch this and other episodes on www.youtube.com slash NTA News 24 Hub. I am your carrier, Clinton. Thank you for watching. <laughs>